those that follow with us online with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Is that a better place to be? I ask. The presence of our God. In the presence of our God, we feel good. Our soul is strengthened. The joy that comes from the Holy Spirit, nothing can replace it. We could have been in any other place, but we chose to be here because there is life here, there is bread here, there is living water, which is Jesus. That's why we came to this place. And we knew that He was waiting for waiting for us here. And the glorification of the church is for this, for this church, for this body, for this spiritual family. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this. We already feel blessed. But the Lord has already shown that He has more to say to our lives through the meditation of His Word. And we'll do this in the book of Revelations, chapter 2. Revelation 2, verse 8 and 11. The last book of the Bible, book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 8 and 11. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. It's good to be in the presence of our God. Um, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These things say the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. And verse 11 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Lord, we want to praise you for what you have already done and much more for what you ought to do during the service. There is a mystery in your hands that you want to operate in our midst tonight. Open up our hearts on our understanding so we can understand your will in the name of Jesus. Amen. The text that we just read was part of the meditation that we just met this morning. That's me this morning. It was the Sunday school. We pray the Lord so, so that the Lord may give to everyone the understanding of how important it is to study the Word. Because when we understand the Word, the enemy of our souls cannot face uh, us in battle because of our faith. That's why it's important that we meditate on it, we feed off of it. The Word of the Lord, and through the power of His Word, through the power of His Word, the world was created, all things were created. And through the word of, of the Lord, uh, He established uh, justice in our behalf. It's the word of the Lord that determines the angels of the Lord to come and minister in our behalf. It's the power of the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is powerful and its power is unlimited. And tonight, the same word, it comes to give us a direction comes to give us an instruction of, of life to our lives. The meditation in the morning was about the church of Smyrna. The word Smyrna comes from myrrh, a plant um, that has a perfume. And the more it's crushed, the more is, and the better and the, the greater is intense the pure perfume that it exhales. And speaking prophetically, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus in his ministry. During Jesus' ministry, he was crushed, he suffered, he perished. It were three years approximately of walk through streets, unpaved streets, for inhospitable situations, change of climate, storms, sandstorms intense cold at night intense heat during the day but the word of the lord says that when somebody asks him where do you live so that we may be with you jesus said the the birds of the sky have their nest the fox have their home but the son of the of god has no place to rest his head he didn't stop an instance three years he walked incessantly so he circulated for a large extension in order to transmit something that today is what sustains us that what it is what 
remains as standing, as salvation. And his assurance that when we close this, the eyes for this life, we will open our eyes to eternity, an eternity with Christ, an eternity with Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Close to his death, the mirth was crushed even more. And the perfume, the praise, the adoration, the life of Jesus, it came to the presence of God as a sweet perfume. The sacrifice of the afternoon, his actions, his his walks, his moments of persecution, he, the humiliations he went through, each action of this was crushing the myrrh. And what we read here in the first verse, the one who was the first and the last, the one who was uh, dead and resurrected, he died for love of my life and your life, even though we don't deserve it. But tonight we could have meditated about what is being prepared for me according to the word is described if, if we accept Jesus as your our Savior and Lord of our lives the only sufficient Savior my brethren there's no comparison Lord with the trials that we go through here if we stop to analyze the church of Smyrna or it, they suffered in a way to identify with their Savior because the word says that I am, I am holy therefore be holy so Jesus is our model when you look at him you want to imitate him and the church of Smyrna did that they followed the steps of Jesus and it sh has shown that it was a church that understood the suffering but not suffering for anguish not the suffering for murmuring not a suffering for depression but a suffering that generated praise for the honor and glory of our Lord. It was a church like Smyrna, where the leaders, the religious leaders and politicians asked, if you say no to this Christ that you preach so much about, if you say no, we are not going to send you to the, to the arenas, deny this Christianity that you always speak about, and your family will be preserved. Deny the one you have respected and honored for so so much more than emperors. But the answer of those, the inhabitants of that city, of, of so many others that served the Lord, was one alone. How can I deny the one who had died to save me? How can I deny the one that gave me eternal life? How can I deny the one that took me away from the darkness into the light and put my feet on the rock? How can I deny? I cannot deny and they were taken to the arenas they were taken to uh, be devoured by the beasts they were devoured alive them, their wives and husbands and children for love to this Jesus that to this day has been alive and speaking amongst us you may have already felt him doing the service you may have felt him doing the praises and doing the glorifications the adoration of the church Jesus is on his throne during these praises he is present during this praise he visits us with a peace and a joy that is a sample of the joy that we're going to feel when we are with him and in glory and tonight during this message his message is being read and we meditate on and explained is his word is him is a verb that became flesh and inhabitant amongst us he died, but he, the death didn't prevent him from continuing because on the third day he resurrected. That's what it says in the first verse. He's the first and the last, the one who died and resurrected. Not even death prevented him from continuing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This church was went through a trial. This church went through several tribulations, went through poverty, went through prison. And the, their suffering was literal and physical. And today, in the 21st century, the present century in which we live, we also have faced tribulations, imprisonment, blasphemies, temptations, and many times, not necessarily physically, but spiritually, emotionally. I've seen that today what torments humanity is the disease of this century, depression, 
Is, can you imagine a tribulation worse than that? Can you see it? A prison worse than that? Can you see it? A blasphemy worse than that? People that many times don't want to see the light of day. They don't want to be in the company of anybody. Sometimes they live with an immense group of people and when you speak with them, they say, I'm alone. I feel alone. Famous people, that many times they are ahead of a great crowd. They have spectacles surrounded by fans. When, but when that moment is over, when they recline their head on, on their bed, they cry and they say, I'm alone. I feel alone. But the one that has the Lord, he reclines the head on, on the pillow and he begins to talk with the Savior. It's the end of our day. When our day is over, we begin to do our, a summary of the day on his hand. We say, Lord, we praise you for that accident. You know, the one that I almost got involved with, but the angel of the Lord and delivered me. Lord, we thank you because I entered into that store and I saw that that person was possessed and I came to the point of being uh, attacked by an attack of the enemy, but you were present with me and I left a life, I left in fellowship and victorious. Lord, we praise you because also I went through a trial at work, but here I am on the surface tonight to praise your name because you sustained me. Ebenezer, the Lord has helped us until now. That's the difference of the Church of Smyrna from the Church of Pompano and the churches there are over the face of the earth. The faithful church of the Lord, they went through trial. But verse 10 says, Do not fear of the things that you are to perish. My brothers, brethren, there is a biblical curiosity that calls my attention. There are 365 times the expression, Do not fear in the Bible. If it was just one day, one expression for each day so that we may never get discouraged do not look behind that we may move forward and in a year there may not be a leap year there is one day for tribulation is there a better day to serve a better is it anything better to serve this god and the gospel is this yes the gospel is this the bible says that whoever loses his life will find it and whoever finds his life and the pleasure of this life, they will lose it for eternity. It is interesting that the world mocks the Christian in Jesus. They mock the Church of Smyrna, they mock the Church of Ephesus and the other church. They criticize them. They mock Jesus when he was near to his crucifixion. They mocked Peter to the point that he ended up betraying Jesus. They mock us they are saying you are losing your life every day with this book with, of the black cover under your arm back and forth what is this but those that mock us when there there's a moment of infirmity that put them in a bed in the hospital they call us they square to go there and visit them and we go because the lord puts in us the love that poured out upon us and it overflew and we go and pray and there, for the mercy of God, many that mocked us and blasphemed us, they accept Jesus, they are saved, and now become part of us. Blessed be the name of our God. I particularly know a couple of people of my youth that came to the presence of the Lord. They came from a situation of being in prison, in tribulation, in pain, situations, bitter situations. Some came from the drugs, for drugs for, from the addiction. They would come and the church would look. Some that knew them would say, this church accepts anyone. Look who is coming to this church. And they would come. But they came humble, recognizing that salvation only in Jesus. And the church surrounded them, embraced them, loved them, held on their hands. The pastor held them on his lap in, until the point when we were able to walk alone they were baptized on the waters and the Holy Spirit they filled the Spirit and have been reached by the Holy Spirit and now they are ministers of the Lord they are pastors for the honor and glory of our Lord that edifies us that keeps us standing that gives us joy to serve the Lord to know that 
This is a God, God that transforms, a God that takes a, a, a rough rock and it works on it, remove the sin, and polishes the stone. Uh, the, sto the stones end up as di diamonds in the presence of the Lord. Uh, God takes someone that is completely ro crooked uh, person and now turns their, that person to an, an instrument in the hands of the Lord. He did like uh, he did with Saul, a man that was used by the hands of the Lord that didn't even want to be called Saul anymore. Call me Paul because when you call me Saul, you feel like I'm big. Call me Paul because I am small. I don't want evidence. I don't want to be seen. That's how we feel in the presence of our God. His love make us uh, feel humble. How many experiences? We can ask you, how many brethren have so many experiences of years that the Lord has given them? The science had already this discouraged them. And some people uh, receive blessings of jobs that they were dreaming about, God had blessed them. And also, others with the family that have been completely destroyed, the Lord restores marriages. Lord, how wonderful is your love. We don't have words to express how, how great is your love. And after we go through trials, after we exhale the great perfume of Christ, our life of, of surrendering to God, God has been everything for us. This gospel of Jesus Christ is sustain us. Is main, he maintains us, and from through Him that we survive. And we can hear from the Lord: "Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life." To whoever is victorious, is not going to receive the damage of the second death. But this is for those that have an ear and can listen to it. The expression that is a little redundant. Who has an ear can hear, right? No, but man that cannot accept Jesus as their savior, man is giving himself to the uh, the sins of this world. A man that has not had uh, a heart of uh, a rock transformed to a heart of flesh, man hears it but does not pay attention to it. We're speaking of an experience in which the Holy Spirit of God gives us and teaches us to have this understanding, to hear the voice of God and to comprehend that He is giving us that direction for our lives. You who entered here tonight came to hear the Word of God and the Lord is telling you, who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit is telling the church. And what is the Spirit, the Spirit telling the church? The Lord is saying that whoever is faithful to the end, whoever is faithful to death, will receive the crown of life he will not experience the dam the damage of the second death. Interesting that we as human beings, we only want to be victorious. There's a period of the year we uh, get attached to the Lord, we go, ask Lord, help me, the year's beginning, I need you to give me victories, I want to be victorious. The month comes to an end, you work for production, and then you go to, to God, Lord, if you do not help me, I'm not going to be able to reach my my objective. I want to be victorious. And others will be working tomorrow and they are they will be already perturbed, stressed because they want to be victorious on that week. We want to be victorious. Everyone to want to be a winner. And tonight I'm going to teach you a secret to be vic victorious. The blood of the Lamb is victory. The blood of Jesus poured out on the cross of Calvary is our victory. And they were victorious by the blood of the Lamb. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us victory. And that's why the church, the letter to the church of Smyrna begins. The angel of the church is Smyrna writes uh, things says to the first and the last who was dead and became alive. This, the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary is what is going to guarantee you victory. And if you never heard this before, know that to make use of this blood is a simple action instead of a mind in your heart that you need to do. Accept Jesus as your Savior. Recognize that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came to die in favor of your life. He died in order for you not to die. Physically, one day we will depart until the arrival of Jesus. One of A few of us are going to die, but the Bible is speaking about an eternal life. Without Jesus, it's an eternal death. But with Jesus, an eternal life in the presence of the Lord, a life of joy and 
place is a place is where it's not going to be crying uh, or a place where it's going to be joy and happiness in the presence of the Lord Jesus, where our tears are going to be dried up. During the praise, there is a man that mentioned a spiritual gift of a woman that came to this place with a heart completely destroyed, hurt. You entered here tonight, but if you want, you can have a, a heart re completely restored because you went into the presence of the one who is the first and the last, the one who died and became alive and overcame death. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Open up your heart and accept Jesus as your Savior. And enter for the number of the ones that are saved and receive the crown of life and eternal life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite church to stand up. All the honor and glory be given to the Lord. to God. Lord to Jesus, hallelujah. Um, to think that we were so concerned with this life, we study, we graduate, we get married, we raise our children, and then come the grandchildren, so many projects, 
in our lives many times is summarized to this existence in this world when we don't pay attention that when we close our, life, our eyes to this life that's when it begins our true life in this morning we had the news of the passing of a, a lady that served the Lord for 50 years in her, of her life in our church she was a servant a woman of God a vessel chosen a fruitful tree and close to her departure she had a dream and on her dream she told the pastor pastor continue preaching continue proclaiming salvation continue showing the path continue allowing the voice of the spirit to speak to through your mouth so the number of uh, saved is completed and the Lord Jesus may come and we may live eternally with the Lord the death is the greatest enemy of man and we're not, I'm not gonna close with the period I'm gonna close with the comma without Jesus because those that are, are with Jesus the death is not, not makes us afraid because we know that when we close the eyes here we open our, up our eyes and return it that's when our wrestle will start this life here, 30, 50, 60, if you are very optimistic, optimistic, 80 years of age, this is nothing. In fact, the life the well lived is when it ends here and begins in eternity with Jesus. To live with Jesus is the best hope, is the great hope, is the only hope, is the only thing that keeps us standing in a life. That's so that the our brethren from Smyrna they went to the arenas with a smile on their faces it caused uh, anger you cannot imagine they went to uh, with the smile on their face and some even sang songs there are historical uh, accounts uh, confirming the Bible some were singing while they were being devoured my god is this a mystery this is loving Jesus more than this life because in fact they understood that the most important is eternal life in Christ Jesus that's why we sing oh hallelujah we'll always praise you oh hallelujah to my Lord that's the greatest joy of all Jesus to know that soon Maranatha will be fulfilled and we'll enter into the celestial gates and we'll see face to face the author of our faith blessed be the name of the Lord Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to have a word of glorification because our names are written in the book of life. We have, over, have overcome through the blood of the Lamb. Our crown is being prepared. And maybe this is going to be one of the songs that we're going to sing while we are around the throne. We are going to invite someone else to praise the name of the Lord here. Lord, we are, are you are a rescue because one day we were in this world without direction, but it was you were the one who chose to uh, show your mercy to us, Lord. You gave us a new way of life. We praise you, Lord, because this day is coming close the day in which we will be in eternity with our God. There, there is not going to be sadness, there's not going to be pains or infirmity there will be only a song of victory Lord 
You praise because every day you have taken care of your people. Have made, give us strength, Lord. Nothing has removed us from uh, this direction that you have placed us. We praise because our uh, target is eternity with you, Lord. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Everyone, the, uh, the other person was praying, can continue praying. Lord, we glorify your name because there's nothing better to be in your presence, Lord, serving your holy name. We praise you, Lord, because we are chosen servants, because we have this opportunity of being here at your feet, knowing, Lord, that one day we'll be together with you, Lord. We praise you for each life that you have brought here tonight, for this week that is beginning, because one day, Lord, you have mercy upon us. We chose us, we chose us from the womb of our mothers, Lord. We praise you for your holy name of our Son, Jesus. Lord, we praise you and give you this service into our altar, Lord, and that tonight may be a night of salvation. Those that entered here, Lord, and didn't have this assurance, whilst well, they may I have this assurance after the service, that we may see your glory and the witness during the assistance. Lord, visit, visit your people. Send your angels to protect us. You have a week of victory because in you we are more than victorious. We surrender. We give you our praise to your altar. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. We're going to begin a period of assist and the praise group can sing softly. The deacons are here at the disposal to hear, to pray. If you can, raise your hand so we can go immediately to your to your help if you are this woman that uh, was mentioned this spiritual gift in for doing the service you were touched by the message tell us share with us in your name the name of the lord will be greatly glorified <laughs> 